Good afternoon, morning, whatever it is where you are. This is Cheech with Fly Fish Food here. And we're going to do a fly on a bear hook that we have in the vise. And uh, it's going to be a mouse pattern. So a lot of you have seen the fly called the Mousy McMouse Face, and it's awesome. It's caught fish all over the world. It's a very, very productive mouse pattern. And uh, so I started working on a very, very small version of that same type of fly. So this fly is called the Mini McMouse Face. One thing that you will see with this um, is that it's only a single hook fly. Now this is a size 4 streamer stripper hook from Fulling Mill. These are the absolute business for streamers or for uh, big flies that you would tie on an extra wide gap hook. Um, the Teflon coating really uh, uh, makes it easy to penetrate. Anyway, the, the reason I only do one hook on this is I, I think articulated flies should only um, should only be done if you have like a, a fly that's too wide to fit in a, in a trout's mouth. So if a trout can put its mouth over the whole fly, then there's no need to put a, a spare hook on there. If you do that, I think your, your hooks are just kind of interfering with each other. But if your fly is longer than the, the width of a trout's mouth, then it's a good idea to articulate. And maybe we'll go into depth on that more. But I just wanted to say that before everybody says, why isn't there a stinger on the tail? All right. So this is a size 4 hook. These are very similar in size to a Gamakatsu B10S. And I'm using 210 Denier Danville. Um, just in black and the color of thread really does not matter on this fly at all okay the other thing about this one is I was at a show in Salt Lake here the Wasatch Expo and I met a guy named Bryce Etter really cool guy well he's a Florida tarpon guy and I looked at one of his toads and I saw how he was doing the tails on his tarpon toads so that the, the rabbit wouldn't foul. And I guess it's a technique that's been used for quite a while, but I was new to it because uh, I'm a trout guy. But I, I, I incorporated it into this fly. I'm sorry I'm being too wordy here. Sorry, Curtis. I'm editing just, it out. Just edit it out. All right. So what I have is some very high quality Trilene, I won't show you where I bought it. Trilene, 25 pound, big game, the cheapest monofilament you can get. And you just want it to be stiff. And I'm just going to tie it in just like this. And the curve is kind of going upward. The next part is uh, the tail is going to be tied out of squirrel. So if you're going to tie these mouse patterns, I would suggest buying the whole squirrel pelt. They look like this. They do face, body, the butt, the belly. The whole thing is here. Um, I've gone through a whole bunch of those because you use almost a full squirrel strip per fly for even the mini ones. So I have, uh, I've trimmed off a piece of squirrel hide. And I want this tail to be about one and a half times the length of the shank of the hook. The other thing that I'm going to do is before I tie this in, I'm going to trim off about all the hair except for that little tuft. And I'm going to poke a hole in it. Okay, so I've trimmed this rabbit strip here. And I'm going to poke a hole in it about halfway up, maybe a little bit closer to where the tie-in point is. And the easiest way to do that is just to take your bodkin and put it on the leather on the table and then lift your leather up through the bodkin. So there you go. All right, so I'm just gonna tie that in right on the back here. One thing that you should do if you have uh, flush cutters is cut your monofilament at an angle. Like this, I didn't do it very well here. So you can see that I cut it at a much better angle and it makes it easier to poke through that hole. So we've poked it through the hole and now I'm just going to take that mono and loop it back on top of the strip now, just like that. 
and that creates a, just a little rigid section of the tail and the rest of it's going to be able to move around. I'm going to probably tighten that up just a little bit. Just like that. You can cut this with your scissors, but if you like to keep your scissors nice, you'll use flush cutters. Okay, so there's there's the tail. And this is a phenomenal way to keep your fly from fouling. Alright, I'm just going to reinforce what I've done so far with some Wapsie Z-Mint. Just a CA glue. That's super glue, or as Curtis calls it, craggle. Alright, and now I'm going to take a section of Zonker. And I'm just going to tie that in right back right here. And I'm going to wrap this forward. This is a really thick one, so I'm just going to do it like one turn. And I'll trim it back off. And it looks really bad right now. Oh, by the way. I'm using these little stubby Renzetti scissors and they are the bomb. I like them a lot. I'm moistening my fingers and just kind of preen those fibers back a little bit just to get them out of the way. Now I'm going to take some three millimeter foam and I'm going to use brown on this one but you can use black as well. Okay now I'm going to take a piece of three millimeter foam black and I'm gonna come up here you see where I put my thread that's just kind of an indicator of how far I want to go up with this uh, because you don't want to tie it in all the way up front because we're gonna put a head on it um, so I'm just gonna kind of attach this on here and really bind that down if you don't tighten this all down really well um, your your body of your fly will twist on you Okay, so the, the way to gauge how thick to cut this foam, and I should have showed this to you, but we're using this extra small um, double barrel, what are they called, popper and slider bodies. And I want it to be roughly the same thickness as the head. So that's how, that's how thick you cut it. And if you do these bigger, um, just follow that same gauge. All right, I'm going to reattach my squirrel now. And you don't have to use touching turns, Davy McPhail reference, but uh, just wrap that forward. Sometimes the squirrel piece is going to be too thick and you don't want to get it too bushy. So tie that off with a little bit of room left at the head and trim it off. And I'll moisten my fingers again and preen those fibers out of the way. And now when I fold this foam over the top, I don't want to pull it tight like this. So what I want to do is I want to fold it and then push it back to create a little bump on the butt. And that's another saltwater trick. Um, so I'm going to push it back like this and then tie that in. And yes, you could fish it just like that. Trim the head. You've got uh, a good mouse pattern. We're going to show you how to get to swim real nice. So when I cut it, I usually use leave a little tab of foam like that. And that's so that I can tie the legs in. Now on the Mousy McMouse face, we tied little knots in the, the rubber legs. But this, we're just going to tie in some uh, flutter legs here. And I leave that foam tab there to kind of guide me as to where I need to tie those in. So I just pull these around the other side.
and we've got legs. Now I like to tie these or trim them so that they're about where that loop is. So we'll just trim them right there. These are too long. All right, so those legs are going to be a little bit unruly. Okay, now we're going to put a head on. But you see there's some bare metal here. I want to give the, the head something to stick to when I super glue it down. So I'm going to take this fuzz that I trimmed off the tail. It's just squirrel dub now. And I'm going to dub that onto my thread. And I'm going to lay that down right there on the shank of the hook. And I'm going to take that, the rest of that off. I got too much. And then I'll go over that with my thread just to kind of get it cinched down. And then I'll throw a whip finish in with it. Okay, now these heads are designed to sit like this going forward, but not for the mouse. We're going to turn it upside down and backwards. So the best way to do that, <clears throat> again, Curtis's poop colored lighter. If you don't have this color of lighter with a little monkey Princess Leia print on it, um, this will not work. So I'm going to take my bodkin that you can see has had a lot of work and I'm going to heat it up. So once it's nice and hot, and that's why I like this ergo bobbin because it insulates it, I'm going to poke a hole right kind of in the middle of this foam and out the back of the, the head. So that's kind of the angle that you're going for because that's going to sit on the fly just like that <clears throat> and uh, the, the latest double barrel heads I've been seeing have like little warts on the nose so if you don't trim that off your fly probably won't work <clears throat> okay so once I have my my head poked I'm gonna test it I'm gonna throw that on there and you can see that looks really, really good. Almost like we meant for it to be there. And I'll take it back off and I'll just soak that squirrel dub now with super glue. And then I'll put it back on. And you should push it on there until you can until you have good hook point or uh, hook eye exposure, and you'll probably have to pry this one up like that to thread it. That's fine. Okay, now for the head, we're gonna make this pretty basic, but uh, to make the bu buggy eyes, we're using Loon Thick. And the crazy strong infinity light. And if you have an infinity light, you hold it to turn it off. All right, now if I were gonna go and fish this as is, those eyes would pop out before it even hit the water. So I reinforce the head with Loon Soft Head. And you just paint a light coating over the, the head. And it looks milky when it goes on. 
but it cures very, very clear and very flexible and durable. This is the very best coating for these foam popper style heads. I'm going to try to do this without being blinded by this light, but you kind of need to leave a little gap under here for the hook eye. You don't want to coat the whole thing. So you can see I've left a little bit. It looks really bad right now because the the glue is still wet. But don't coat over that eye. Um, it's really hard to get out of there because it's such a flexible uh, a, or glue. Anyway, we're going to let this dry and then Curtis will take a picture of it and show you the finished fly. Anyway, this is a great little mouse for for trout, um, bass, I've heard even maybe discerning bluegill will eat it. But this is called the Mini McMouse Face, soon to be in a fly shop near you. That's a little surprise.